Bitcoin has been trading firmly above 60,000. Gold last week had a very nice close above $2,080. And this has been one of the best week closing for the past three, four years already. Why are all these limited supply assets going up? I think that we don't really have one single reason to provide for all this explanation. But what I like to do here in this video is to give you my viewpoint from the point of US Treasuries, US dollar, and why potentially we might be seeing these assets for example Bitcoin and gold continue to move up and how from my point of view that you can invest in gold long term first let's talk about the inverse relationship between bonds and bond prices for example if the bond you move down the bond prices will go up so in 2024 the market is expecting that the interest would be heading down Hence, the bond price will be moving up. Investors seek you, the income generated by bonds. Same thing, for example, if we put money inside a fixed deposit, what you're looking for would be the interest rate. Now, if US interest rate is to drop, then the newly issued treasuries would give a lower yield. The investors would be moving elsewhere to look for better investment. But this is not true because US treasuries they are seen as one of the safe haven in market. So regardless of how low you that can be, it is much better according to investment point of view to buy US treasuries because it's one of the safest instruments in the world. And it's so much better to buy, for example, a junk bond. Okay, a junk bond might be paying, let's say 20%, 25%, but then it has the potential of becoming junk. There's a potential that could be default. Hence, regardless of how low that the U might be for US treasuries, then investors will still prefer to buy into US treasuries. But there is definitely a risk return trade off. So for example, if investors perceive that this year Fed is going to cut rate, then potentially that the U will be lower for US treasuries. And what is the current problem for US treasuries right now? As of 2022, the US national debt stands at approximately 121.3% percent of the gross domestic product GDP. Now this means that the total debt owed by the US government is more than 131 percent of the value of all the goods and services produced within the country. Based on the projection by Statistica, there is a potential for the national debt in the United States in relation to GDP to reach 137% in 2028. If this figure is not alarming, the US national debt is currently increasing by approximately 1 trillion every 100 days. As of Jan 2024, the public debt of the US was around 34.2 trillion. Now what all this means is that there is a potential for US to default. Meaning that I'm not saying that US will be defaulting right now, but with the huge debt, the market is scared that US will default. Now, if US is to default, then what will happen to US dollar? There will be a flight of safety. There will be a flight out of the US debt and US dollar will in turn be dropping. And if you don't want to hold US dollar right now, and if you are projecting that in the future that the US might default or have a higher chance of defaulting, or aren't we going to diversify into other other instruments which are hard asset which are assets that give us and retain value over a period of time such as to buy into gold which is limited supply so this is one of the core reason i think personally in my opinion that the hard assets okay those especially with limited supply they are rising in value right now as investors if you are looking to hedge into inflation we know that gold is a good instrument and if you look at the added a viewpoint that potentially US treasuries might lose its attractiveness over time and then the investors are actually flowing into hard assets with limited supply then I think that gold could be one thing to consider. In this video that I did in the past uh, I was talking about Go ETF. So it is still one of the instruments that investors might consider because of the ability to buy in small little sizing. I mean, if you buy a go, right, you have to buy one piece of go. And if you buy into the small little nuggets, then the spread could be a little bit higher. ETF is something where investors from Singapore might want to consider, especially to invest using the CPF or SRS. Uh, the stock code of the go ETF uh, is uh, O87. O87 is the ETF that's denominated in Sing dollar. So with this, you do not need to change in the US dollar. 
as you know one of the issue if us is to default then uh, us dollar might depreciate and uh, i think that uh, based on what i've calculated if there should be a true breakout of the current cup and handle pattern that means that currently i'm seeing that gold has this continuation pattern which is cup and handle pattern and if there is a breakout means that if price is to trade higher then in the near term it could reach to 2250 that's my own projection but in the longer term we might see gold moving towards 2600 i hope that it will become true because i'm holding you know personally quite a lot of gold and I hope that this video is um, beneficial to you and remember to watch the earlier video and as well as to look into O87 which is an ETF that's traded in Singapore exchange. I hope that you like this video and remember to give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and see you in my next video.